What if today is the day that God changed your life? It all starts with just a few questions. Does a God that big really see me, hear me, care about me, understand me? We believe the answer is yes. Today, He is present, and in His presence, all things are possible. So bring your hurts, bring your loneliness, bring your fears, bring your doubts, because in His presence is the answer to all of those things, just like it has been for hundreds of other people. We believe that His presence is changing our community and our campuses so that we're known as a place where God changes lives forever. God's presence is real, and we believe that it will be real for you today. Good morning, church family. We are so excited that you have joined us. If this is your first time, we just want to say welcome. Welcome to church. Exactly. You know, my name's Aaron Schluter, and I'm joined here with, with Dana Weaver. And uh, we're just blessed that you're able to be here with us this morning. You know, we are a local church community here in, located in Pullman, Washington. And we serve the local communities of, of Pullman, as well as just across the, the border in Moscow, Idaho, and some of the surrounding communities here. And so we're a, a local body of believers, and this is our 50th year of ministry here on the Palouse. And so we're super excited about that and, and what God has done uh, in and through this congregation over the years. We've, we've grown a lot, changed a lot, and, and are just are really blessed by the grace of the Lord as he has shown it here in this community. So I am now joined this morning by our speaker this morning, CJ Carrier. Hey, CJ, welcome. Hey, thank you hey, very now, much. Now, CJ, he's our director of missions mm -hmm. here at, at, at uh, Living Faith Fellowship, and so he always brings uh, a very unique perspective to our community here, and, and we're blessed to have him and the work that he does. CJ, can you give me just a little bit about what you might be speaking about this morning? Yeah, so today, uh, you know, we do so many things locally and globally, and today I want to encourage the body in what we are doing. Um, COVID has been very interesting for all of us, and people have asked, what, what has been happening in missions? So I want to bring that report. It's been over a year since we've had mm -hmm. one of these, and it's time for you guys to hear what's going on. Excellent, excellent. Now, it, CJ, is there maybe um, a, a takeaway, something that you want our congregation to walk away from this morning um, in, the, in our mind? Know that God has not stopped moving. He has not stopped mobilizing people for his glory, and we are a part of that. So we just need to all ask, Lord, what is your mission for me? We need to continue to fulfill that. And then when those are connected together, we see that God is doing something amazing that's way bigger than any one of us. Excellent, excellent. Well, we look forward to hearing cool, from you bro. a little bit later uh, this morning. Thanks, awesome. CJ. We'll Appreciate see you, you then. All right. all right. So it's exciting to be a part of a church community where we do have um, a, a global mindset in our local church. And so while we are here serving in our communities of, of Moscow and Pullman and, and, and the surrounding region, we also have these connections in other parts of the world. And, and those, are, those aren't just, oh, we don't just write a check and send it. We have these meaningful relationships. And that's part of what CJ does is, is um, he, he's in the midst. He is the, the, the hands extended. He is the community connection to these other parts. And he's going to talk about that uh, a little bit more later. And so that, that's an exciting thing to be a part of here at, at our church. It's one of the ministries anyway that we're involved in. Absolutely. It is such a joy to be a part of a church family that cares about the world. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Filipino, and it's so fun when my first time coming into this church, when I came and I was just greeted with so much love, but then also a love for my culture. And it wasn't even, I, I was born in the Philippines, but I've moved all over. But to have just people that appreciated the world and what God is doing on a global scale was just so exciting to me because it, it allowed me to enter in and celebrate with them every, every color, every tribe, every tongue um, with this church. And it's been such a fantastic, fantastic journey and incredible opportunities um, to enter into what God is doing on a global scale. And uh, for those of you who have just tuned online, I just want to say welcome. Welcome to the Simonson family. We're so excited that you have joined with us. If this is your first time at church, please feel free to go ahead and put your name in the comment section and just say hey and 
who's watching with you or where you're watching from, we would love to greet you and welcome you this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned, you know, your heritage and being born in the Philippines. And, you know, I was born in Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> and I have lived in Idaho almost my entire life, yet because of my connection here in this community, I have very good friends from Ghana, Africa, yes. from India, yes. and you know other parts of the world that, that I never would have that connection to living in Idaho. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's we have such a unique community we do. with our universities here that that bring people from literally all over the world and it's our connection our common connection our common bond uh, through Christ that we're able to build meaningful relationships in in a global way in such a small part of the world right here and it, it's really a fantastic opportunity that we have and and something that if you were to uh, attend in person you you kind of will be able to see that the the flavor that we have within our community is yeah here we are on the Palouse in a worldwide sense we're kind of remote you know we're really we removed from a lot of things a lot of a lot of people fly into the Pullman airport going where are we going we're we're flying over wheat fields for hours before we get anywhere how can this possibly be on the globe and yet here we are and we're filled with with um representatives from nations literally all over the world. It's, a, it's really a, just an amazing experience. And I value that so much for myself because it helps me to have a bigger perspective than just my own little bubble. Absolutely. Helps my children have a bigger perspective than their little bubble. And so it's, it's, it's really just such a blessing that the Lord has brought that type of provision here in our community. Yes, and as Aaron was saying, there's so many opportunities to even connect with the global church or just what's happening around the globe. I mean, ministries like Malawi Well, um, we had a couple um, engineers and a couple people from our church that actually went to Malawi um, to serve. That was multiple years ago, but the relationship with the with the people in Malawi has continued, and this church body has responded beautiful, beautifully in giving and supporting this project of establishing wells all over Malawi. Water is life, and water is something that we are privileged to have here in the States, but then to, to go out and to make sure that people have that um, that necessity um, within reach, not within like a couple miles of a walk, but within reach is just a beautiful way that we can partake and make sure that our brothers and sisters in Christ, people all over the world um, have the necessities of life, but then also are, are um, given the opportunity to know of the gospel, that Jesus is love and mm. that God cares for them. And because God cares for them, we care for them. And it's so cool to be a part of a church that really does love people all types of people, small, big, young, old, whatever age, whatever color, God loves everyone and so do we. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and a part of our, our church mission here is to, to make devoted followers of Christ in community, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And, and the ways that we go about doing that on a global scale, as well as here on a local scale, you know, they look very similar. Some of the things we do here, you know, we're, we have a, a, a very strong um, college outreach program. And so we have a um, a, a, the, the JCD company, which is a, a, a college discipleship training program. We also have our Campus Christian Fellowship, which is a weekly meeting for college students where mm -hmm. they can get um, really hear the gospel for many of them for the very first time. I know I was a, got saved, gave my life to the Lord for the first time as a part of those ministries, and that's something that we continue to do here. But after that, we work very hard to establish new believers in their faith through the different classes and teachings that we have through our our Carpenter Series program, as well as our Bible Foundations, which is a sequential teaching about what are the the, the, the crucial foundational um, concepts in Scripture that teach us about who God is, who mm. Jesus is, and why our need for Him, and, and, and ultimately His provision for us in relationship and through salvation. And so those we, we work very hard not just to get people saved, but help keep them saved yes. through that, that, that part of, uh, of our church culture and our teaching in those ministries. And so those are some of the things you could expect to be a part of uh, here uh, in our church. But even more important than that is we love to worship the Lord. Absolutely. You know, we're going to, we work very hard to encourage our congregation to, to read through the scripture every year and to, to know what the word of God says and then to express our love and our personal relationship with him through worship. And so we're going to be doing that here this morning. And so if you are joining us at home, we invite you to join in. You know, you can you can stand in, in your living room. You can raise your hands. You can sing along. The words will be on the screen. 
hopefully that, that, that some of the atmosphere that we have here is being communicated to you and that you can enter in in that process. But we'd love for you to join in worship. Stay tuned for a, a great message from uh, CJ a little bit later. And just enjoy connecting with us as we worship the Lord. So we love you, and we're so blessed that you're joining us this morning. Hello, Hello church family. It is a great day to worship God, to hear his word, and to fellowship together. And we're so happy that you are here with us. You know, spending time in prayer, just thanking God for everything we love about being part of this congregation. It reminds me of Paul urging brothers and sisters to warn those who are idle, to encourage the disheartened, to help the weak, and to be patient with everybody. And it just speaks so strongly to who our church is. How awesome is it to come together as a group and to enjoy each other, to encourage each other, to know that we aren't the only ones going through things, and to celebrate together. We are so grateful to have people like you to surround us. Good morning, church family. Today we get to celebrate what God is doing across the world called Mission Sunday. What the mission of God is for the world, for His heart for the nations. We're talking about that this morning. We get to celebrate, we get to join with thousands, millions of people all over the world celebrating our great God and telling Him how awesome He is. Amen. Everyone, sing a new song, reaching out with a new hallelujah, breaking out and every nation, sing it out, sing a new hallelujah. from the top again. Can you hear? Can you hear? There's a new song ringing out from the children of freedom. Every race and every nation sing it out, sing a new hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Let us sing love to the nations, bringing hope of the grace that has freed us. Make it known and make it famous. Sing it out, sing a new hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. All right. Let the church Let the 
So we want to launch into an, an old standard around here. But it is so good. So good. This song is called Ancient of Days. Its lyrics are taken right out of Revelation. This time where it tells us about what, what heaven looks like as every nation, every people is surrounding the throne of God, lifting it up, saying, blessing, honor, strength, and power be to our God. So we've got these flags around. And if you wouldn't mind, go and grab one. Go ahead and grab a flag. You see a flag over there. It's interesting. This flag's over there on that side of the wall. Flag's over there on that side of the wall. If you see your, your home country, we've got a different, bunch of different nations represented in the room. If your home country is represented, go ahead and tap somebody on the shoulder and say, I'd, I'd, I'd love to carry that flag. And we don't have every country, unfortunately, but a good representation. So grab them, grab them. And this is a little bit, a little bit of what heaven looks like as every nation sings blessing and honor to our God. There's still a couple more. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. There's still a couple more. Wave them, wave them proud. This is our representation of every nation because that's what God deserves, amen? It's not just our praise here in this room, not just people here in the United States of America, but across the world. God's people coming together to declare His greatness. Blessing and honor, glory and power, to the ancient of days from every nation of creation bow before the ancient of days every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow at your throne in worship you will be exalted O oh God and your shall not pass away, O oh, ancient of days. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be to the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before thee. Bow at your throne in worship, you be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. See his kingdom shall reign, your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing it to the ancient. Your 
kingdom shall reign over all the earth. We sing to the ancient of days, for none can compare to your master's word. Sing to the ancient of days, your kingdom, your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing to the ancient of days. this word sing to the ancient of days every tongue every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow at your throne and worship you be exalted O God and your kingdom shall not pass away O ancient of days
Yes, I love America, but I love Sudan. I love China. I love Turkey. I love Nigeria. I love every nation that I've created for myself and from each place call those who would call upon my name, who would love me, who would be part of my kingdom. Oh, have my heart. Yes, be loyal and faithful to where I have placed you. Yet have my heart for all peoples, for all who would call upon my name that I invite. And I would ask you to have my heart and ask you to ask, what's my part to play? How am I to build the kingdom on this earth to prepare the bride for the groom? What am I to do? Start by having my heart and my love for the nations. The Lord just put on my heart right now to, uh, everybody should grab a flag. If a flag is not grabbed, and everybody has a flag holding it up, and we're gonna pray for these nations. These flags represent a nation and a group of people within certain borders that are overruled by spiritual entities and powerful forces. The Word of God says we war not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we wanna pray for these countries, many, and even including us, that are under a bondage and oppression and spiritual darkness. And so everybody have a flag, and then that, the next thing, we get people around, whoever's holding the flag, lay hands on them. This is a spiritual thing. It's not any hokey pokey weird stuff. This is just like, hey, we're laying hands on these countries right now, and we're gonna take authority over spirits, and we're gonna believe God to do something. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord God, right now, we lift up each one of these countries. And even those not represented here today, for there are many, and we know that they are very near and dear to your heart, Lord, that you came and you shed your blood, you gave your life for them, Lord God, that they might be redeemed and saved and enjoy all of eternity in heaven with you. And right now, we plead the blood of Jesus over every one of these countries. We take authority in the name of Jesus Christ over the spiritual wickedness in high places, and we bind you, and we cast you down. We cast down the obstacles to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We loosen the Spirit of God Almighty to be upon those nations and those lands, even from the youngest to the the oldest and those not born yet, that your spirit would move in powerful ways and bring forth a mighty revival upon all of this earth, Lord God, before you're coming again. In Jesus' name we ask this, and we believe it. Amen.
You're the radiance of all of His glory. Let adoration fill this place. You hold everything together by the word of your immovable power. We sing the song. You are worthy indeed, O oh God. 
And we do gather to lift you up and to bring you glory. Oh, Lord, we thank you that you're not just worthy, but you're trustworthy. And you're not just trustworthy for us here, but you're trustworthy for every human on earth, oh God. Every human can put their trust in you because you're trustworthy. Every knee will indeed bow from every tribe and from every nation. Every knee will bow, but not just because you're Lord of all, but because you're trustworthy. You're the God of all that cares for every human. Oh God, I pray that we would take on that same burden. As your church in the earth today, regardless of the country we come from, regardless of our culture, oh God, I pray that we take on the culture of the kingdom of God and that we'd have your heart, your heart for the nations, your heart, oh God, for bringing the nations to you. Lord, help us to be on mission, to anticipate each day how you might indeed use us for your kingdom purposes because you are worthy. And your, the cause of your kingdom is the most worthy. We love you with all of our heart, oh God. Help us to get this, to truly have a revelation of you, of your character, of who you are, and of what you're about, and how you do things, and how you want to do things through us. And we thank you ahead of time for the privilege, oh God, of being your people, and being used of you, oh God, for your purposes. We don't take that lightly. And if we have, we repent, oh God, and we stir ourselves up according to your heart and your purposes. We pray for one day, L.A., that, that happened yesterday, oh God, and pray for the fruit of that outreach in L.A., that it would truly be transforming of that city, and that the ripple effect would continue to go and go and go to other cities. We pray for the movement of your kingdom in our country for the gospel to change lives and transform and help and minister to the most needy that we know. We love you. We love you with all that we are in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ah, it's good stuff to gather in the house of God. Yes, I love it. And thank you all for coming. But first here we have a, a, a word of knowledge. Anybody with a word of knowledge uh, you want to come minister to us? Simply, uh, word of knowledge is simply where the Holy Spirit reveals a need to somebody and they're faithful to come and express that but it's God's heart and he wants to minister to you if you identify with this so a little broad uh, kind of purpose but somebody's got uh, problems with their digestive system and God wants to touch that uh, heal that this morning God, we thank you. You see it all. You are the creator in the first place and the healer when it's all said and done as well. And so we look to you. We thank you that you care, that your eye is on each of these individuals and that you are here to bring healing. And so let healing come now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let healing come to the glory of the living God. Let the Holy Spirit move radically through these bodies that the that the God of all would be glorified and magnified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have uh, just something real quick to share. I know that CJ's preaching on the nations, and as we were worshiping, the Holy Spirit quickened a, a story in the Bible to me, a fam familiar to all of us, and that's the story of Jonah. And Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because he hated the people in Nineveh. He hated the Assyrians. They were wicked. But God called him to take the message of repentance to those that he didn't like. As we look at the flags of the nations, we're reminded of cultures throughout our earth. These are all God creations. The people, the humans that live there are created by our God in his image, just like you and I. It's very wrong for us to have hatred toward people that we may not agree with politically, whether that's in our own country or in another country. We need to have, I'm just stirred that we need to have the love of God in our heart toward all people. I'm reminded of Richard Wormbrandt, uh, if you know the voice of the martyrs ministry, but he was ministering and he was uh, prison, imprisoned in communist Russia. Many of you know the stories. He hated communism, the system that oppressed people, but he loved the Russians. He loved the communists, you know, themselves. He just hated the spirit that was oppressing them. 
And it's a great message for us. Let's go out with the love of God in our hearts for all peoples. And uh, let's look forward to a great message from CJ. So it's a great time to be seated. And take your children to the nursery and children's church. My wife's serving in children's church today. So I wish I could go. But <laughs> the funny thing is, you know, when you sing songs like Ancient of Days and you start identifying and taking it personally. I mean, you know you're getting old then, you know. You think this is a personal song. No, it's about God, right? It's not. <laughs> anyway. Well, I do want to bring a, just a, a very hearty, warm welcome to all of you that have come here on this uh, sunny Palouse Sunday and uh, gathered in the house of God to honor him and to glorify him and to lift him up. If you're a guest with us today, we welcome you. Thank you for coming. And uh, whether you've been a guest before and you visit uh, every now and then or whether you're a, a, a visitor for the first time, we are so glad you're here. And uh, so uh, please uh, enjoy every aspect of, of what happens here. And just so you know, after service, we don't just take off. We, we talk to each other and enjoy each other's uh, fellowship. So our pastors are on a, a, a time of, of refreshment and so they're being uh, refreshed, taking some time together and uh, enjoying that. So that's a good thing, right, to get, uh, to get refreshed and come back so we can just give it all we got. We do have to have times of rest. So they, they worked for six weeks. Now they're taking a week of rest, right, just like God, right, just six and one, right? Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right. Well, uh, this morning, CJ's going to minister to us. I get so excited every time he does. Because he brings a good word, a, a big picture word. And, but before that, we have Aaron and Dana back there going to talk to us. Yeah, good morning and thanks for joining us. If you're new with us this morning, you could, if you would please take, fill out a, a connect card that you'll find in the pew rack in front of you. You could take that out, fill it out, and then uh, bring it with you to the guest services kiosk after the service. Or you can drop it in any of the offering boxes. And additionally, if you... Um, if you're watching online, you can also fill out that Connect card on our church app. Absolutely. And just as Pastor Tom said, we are so glad that you have joined us this morning. We have people in Pullman and Moscow all over the Palouse tuning in. But we have a lot of families also joining us across Washington State and Idaho State. We even have families on the road. Safe travels. Thank you so much for joining. And we have people in California joining. And it's such a joy to um, celebrate and what God is doing across the globe and just work worship him and all the things that he is doing. We're just so excited that we get to be in the presence of God with you today. Yeah, and so now it is my pleasure to be able to introduce to you this morning's speaker. You all know C.J. Carrier. Um, you may know him as a devoted, committed follower of Christ. He's a loving husband and a loving father. And also, he's a director of missions here at Living Faith Fellowship. And so he's going to be bringing a fantastic word, exposing, expanding all of our minds about a global mindset here in our local community. So if you will join, put your hands together and join welcoming C.J. Carrier. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Nice welcome. Man, Mission Sunday. Today is Mission Sunday. Welcome. This is exciting. I love the worship. I love what God is doing. Today, you know, we have not heard a lot of what has been happening in missions over the last year. COVID has been very interesting. And I am here to bring you a report that God is alive. Yeah, come on. Come on. God's alive, people. God's alive, people. Come on, Jamie. Jamie, show me your excited face. Come on back. There it is. God is alive, baby. All right. Today we're going to look at this church, the, the way this church has been involved in um, local and global missions. I love bringing this report. I've done it before. It's one of my favorite messages to bring because it's really a celebration of what God is doing through each one of us. We are stronger together together. Whoa, <laughs> my voice. Is that my voice? We love using Matthew chapter 25 as an outline for much of what we do in missions as a church. Every time we use it, there's so much to cover. And it really is an incredible outline for us to just look at, at the, off, uh, the, the ways we are involved individually versus corporately. Think about this. Every one of us are tasked with a mission from God every day. Amen. Every day we are tasked with a mission. But together, 
we're also tasked with a mission. And that together, when we are connected together, there's something so strong about being connected together in God's mission. So we'll look at that today. We're part of a, a church, a part of thousands of churches. That is an amazing phenomenon in the kingdom of God. We're doing our part as God is mobilizing his church to advance his work across the entire planet. It is not our job to compare. Oftentimes we do that. We do that even in-house. We compare one to another, and sometimes that, that really brings a disparity in the church. We're, our job is not to compare, but rather as a congregation, as a leadership, we are to ask, we are to seek, and we are to knock. Lord, where do you want us involved? And then we move through those doors that God opens up, and God gets all the glory. I'm going to talk about that today. There's been a lot of struggle in some of these ministries that I'm going to mention today because of the pandemic. It's not all been easy. And I, for the most part, uh, the, the ministries have stayed the course, but we've made a lot of adjustments along the way. You'll hear some ministries have been put on hold. And it's important for us to hear this because of, there is struggle, there's loss, and there's disappointment. But we continue to look to God in all of it. We're going to hear some prayer requests through that struggle, and it's important that we hear those. You know, even last week when Adam Rushold brought an amazing word, it was a timely word. I so respect that man, so respect him and Anna. I love the word, I, but it had struggle to it. But he brought scripture to it, he brought life to it, but it had struggle to it. I think we're all struggling in one way or the other. And it's important for us to share that struggle one with the other. We don't, it's not always a, hey, doing great. There's real depth in this struggle, and we need to share that one with another. I want to share some of this struggle in ministry. So, um, At the end of this, this report, there is going to be a table in the back. And, I, and there's also uh, on your phones, if you guys go to the app, there's ways you can be involved. So I, I want you to, to, to just know that this is coming. So there's action steps for us as a congregation. There's going to be a table in the back on this side. Uh, please go see those people. And then also on the app on your phone. So, All right, let's jump in. Matthew 25, 35 through 40. Will you stand with me as we read the word? Oh, so just a little blurb. When there's a comma, we hit slight pause as a congregation. Just slight. So we go, before I was hungry, pause. And then we keep going, period, pause. And then you, some of you English people are like, yes. Anyways, for I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Mm. For I was hungry and you fed me. We've got local food banks. Here we go. We're jumping in. Every month, on the first Sunday of each month, we gather food for local food banks. We have a number of small businesses in this congregation that work with Community Action Center as well. Community Action Center, because of COVID guidelines, the Community Food Bank now offers curbside service. If the CAC is unable to meet the needs of a family or individual, they often refer people to our church because we are recognized in our community for helping local people in need. Praise God. I'm glad we're a church that is recognized for that. Hallelujah. God, you get the glory. Pullman Child Welfare is a local grassroots organization begun by concerned individuals in the early 50s to meet the needs of children living in poverty in the Pullman School District. Today, its services include operating a weekly food bank, partnering with the Stuff the Bus collection of school supplies, making swim passes and camp scholarships for children available during the summer, providing twice yearly vouchers for shoes, operating the coats for kids drive in November through December, placing and coordinating sharing trees during the Christmas season to collect toys for children, giving vouchers for Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners, 
as well as Christmas gifts for children and flannel pajamas for children 10 and under. There are periodically, periodically one-time provisions of rental assistance, medical expenses, or gasoline. As a church, we have collected food items every other month since 2003. During COVID, the PCW Food Bank stayed open continuously, providing food for all who needed it. Before COVID, this gets interesting, 35 to 40 families were accessing the food bank each week, giving, out, giving up to about 1,200 pounds of food on a Saturday morning. With the government's stepped-up provisions of free food, Saturday accessions have dropped to 6 to 10 families. However, as many of the governmental accommodations for COVID compensation end, such as food distribution, we expect to see an increase of clientele. It is primarily the church as a whole whom God has designated to care for the needy, not the government. So it is important for us to continue to keep giving, ready for meeting needs as the, as the hand that has been feeding the hungry is withdrawn. That hand will withdraw. We should stay in touch with PCW as needs increase and new opportunities are, are to help are exposed. It is easy to be a part of this ministry, you guys. Simply donate non-perishable food the first Sunday of each month. A reminder item and suggested food ideas is normally included in the LFF update prior to the first Sunday. Mary Baldridge, she's the contact on that. So if you guys need more information, Mary Baldridge, amazing lady. Poverty Awareness Task Force. Living Faith represents the local faith community at these monthly meetings. Local agencies from Whitman County, Wazoo, and Pullman Fire and Police Departments meet to discuss the ongoing needs in our community. These meetings provide a broader picture of local issues of homelessness, poverty, and drug addiction. Curtis Troll is the contact on that. Thanks, man. Meals on Wheels. What is Meals on Wheels and who does it serve? Pullman Count Community Council on Aging provides hot, nutritious, 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 is that my voice? Nutritious lunchtime meals to homebound seniors in Pullman. Meals are delivered by volunteers 365 days a year. The value of the meal is significant. The meals are nutritious, <laughs> oh my gosh, nutritious. Hold on just a minute. Nutritious, nutri <laughs> nutritious, all right? The meals are nutritious and well-balanced. It may also be the only hot meal they have in a day. But it also serves as a friendly visit and a quick safety check. Meals on Wheels help seniors maintain their independence and the ability to remain in their own home. We're all heading this direction, everybody. It's important for us to be aware of this ministry. The program has been operating in Pullman since 1974 every single day. How, is we, how are we involved as a church? The Meals on Wheels program relies on volunteers to deliver the meals, and that's where we come in. We've been apart since 1991. That's 30 years of service, church. That's amazing. Seriously. Every year we deliver meals every day in the month of January. Even during COVID, we continued with this ministry. You will see announcements to sign up at the beginning uh, in December or the LFF update on, or on the app. Meals are prepared at Bishop Place Senior Living. Volunteers pick up the meals there and deliver them to the clients. It takes about an hour. So thank you all to who, uh, you guys who have served over the years. Lily Sherman is the contact on that. Lily. Internationally, in Malawi, we are helping to feed people in Malawi. Intense food shortages continue to impact many regions in Malawi, especially in the north. There are many factors that contribute to these shortages that I will not get into this morning. But we are church, we're aware of those, and we, are, we feel responsible from the Lord to help. This past December, we helped extremely needy people, destitute of food. And the church there, they express an immense, overwhelming appreciation for this church that we are partnered together in such an endeavor. Uh, I'm the contact on that. Meals at different people's homes. Thank you. <laughs> that we can never, you know, we, there's so much bread breaking that happens in this place that we can never even measure. You guys open up your homes to so many different people. Thank you. God notices every single transaction. God bless you. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. College students, again, check this out. At the beginning of the school year, Campus Christian Fellowship hands out thousands of water bottles with their logo on it to invite college students to be a part of CCF, an impartation of divine encounter with Jesus. Last year, because of COVID, they were not able to hand out the water bottles. That has been a huge way 
to get the word out about CCF. Of course, the ministry has continued on. Thank you, Pastor Joe and Suzanne. It continues on, but that strategy has been amazing, and it got knocked out last year. They hope to be able to do it this year, and that's why we need to be praying that, that the strategy will open up and creative ways will open up to continue to reach really what we can call today an unreached people group. So Pastor Joe and Suzanne are the contact there. Woo! Come on. Malawi Wells, in December of 2020, seven months ago, we had the privilege of funding the drilling of two more wells. In Mahunga, in Mahunga Village, that's 101 households, a well was provided, estimated about 450 people. In Matanera Village, 232 households, serving around 1,500 people, was the second well. Since 2016, we have been able to partner with our family in Malawi to see 10 well, wells drilled, serving over 6,000 people with clean safe drinking water, all of which, all those wells are still functioning today because we worked on the foundation side of this ministry to make sure it was sustainable. Hallelujah. God gets the glory there. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. Family promise of the Palouse. Living Faith is one of about 15 local churches that serves one week every three months to provide food for local approved homeless families. Before COVID, we also housed the families in our church building. With the families spending the day at the Family Promise Day Center in Moscow. For the past year, the organization has housed the families in a Moscow hotel with the churches still providing home-cooked meals to the day center. If you are able to assist in caring for local homeless families through our church, please contact Susan Wofford or Curtis Troll. Awesome. It's huge. I think as I go through all this, as you guys hear these different ministries, I do believe that the Holy Spirit moves on us. And, and so as you're maybe moved to maybe be involved in a ministry, please don't just sit on that. Um, please. That's why at the end of this service, there'll be a, an opportunity to respond. Even if it's just information, you're not committing the next 20 years of your life to these ministries. Um, you're just simply saying, I'm interested. I'd like more information. New people in this church, family. If you are new with us this morning, we want to welcome you. Absolutely. Jesus took us in individually. We want to extend our arms and say, you are absolutely welcome here. With internationals, this is interesting. If you're an international with us this morning, we want to welcome you. You know, think about this. How many in our congregation, how many of you guys like to cook? All right. There's some hands. Cool. All right. So you guys as cooks, you go to, you go to prepare an amazing meal. And you go to your spice rack, all right, and, and when your spice rack, what if your spice rack looks like this? Man, I'm just saying, that ain't cool. You're like going, mmm. All right, what if your spice rack looks like this? Come on now. There it is. Now, some of you guys have a way more elaborate spice rack. Check this out. When we read the Bible, this is what God likes. On his rack. You internationals add so much flavor. Yes. Come on. Yes. Internationals in this house add so much flavor. I don't want to be a, a part of a church that's on the left. I want to be a part of a church that's on the right. Because that's way more in the heart of God. And if God's going to prepare a meal, he wants to use some flavor. Amen. Come on. Thank you internationals for being a part of this church. We warmly welcome you. It is not an easy thing coming from another culture into a new culture, coming from a different church climate into a, a, a different church climate. That's okay. There's a lot of grace in God's kingdom, and we welcome you. You have a place here. You belong in this rack. You belong in this rack. At the end of this service, we're going to have a table in the back, and anybody who's an international, we want you to go back there. We want you to tell us where you're from. We're going to put a pin in the country that you represent. We want to honor that. We want to celebrate that. We want to know that you're, you're a part of this house, but you're a part of another, another house as well. That is okay. This is the kingdom of God. We want to celebrate you. So please, at the end of this service, let's have an international party in the back there at that table. Put your pen in there, and we're going to, we're going to get down to business. Mm. Also, there's some uh, upcoming international events that we want, to, we want to invite you to, so please go to that table as well. Differing local needs. There are people in our community that reach out for a helping hand. They contact us and we often direct them to community agencies that can better assist their specific needs. Or if it is something we can assist with, we will do that as well. Watoto sponsorship. We've been sponsoring a child named David Musiemi from Uganda 
that we've been supporting since tw- uh, about 2010. We started when he was two years old. So this is his picture at two. This is when he started. This is, he's now 12 years old. He's become a, a, a dude, a man. And it's pretty neat for our church to be able to see this transition, this story unfold. Children of Prisoners Ministry. Six years ago, our church started partnering with Prison Fellowship International and sponsored 78 kids. Thank you so much for your investment into that ministry. Thank you so much for your your financial investment and your spiritual investment. That is not, we oftentimes just don't say thank you to those sponsorships. If you're doing compassion as well, thank you. That it, that. It's an amazing ministry, and we just thank you so much for being a part of that church. Solitary and families, talk with a friend, and he said this. You don't get to choose your birthday. You don't get to choose your nationality. You don't get to choose your parents. Isn't that so true? Yet here we all are, a part of God's family. Solitary and families. We're part of God's family that is spread out into this local community, but it's also spread out in, in, across an entire global community. And he is using us to reach into every story on this planet with his name. Our job is to make his name famous. Psalm 68, 6. Father, of, this is in the message. Father of orphans, champion of widows, is God in his holy house. May that be said of this house. Small group ministries. If you're looking for a place to get connected in a smaller group dynamic, you know, on a Sunday we gather, but it's important for us to be gathering outside of Sunday. That's where community really happens. And that is uh, that Pastor Dan and Cassie Fitzgerald are the contact on small group ministries. Awesome. Union Gospel Mission. Uh, LFF has been supporting them since 1987. That's us, 1987. The mission, partnering with the Inland Northwest to reach the poor with the love and the power of the gospel so they may become God-dependent, contributing members of society. That is an awesome mission statement. In December of 2019, Living Faith Youth, we haven't even reported this because COVID hit, which is crazy. Living Faith Youth, they were 7th and 12th graders at the time. Now some of them are graduated and you know, doing that thing, married and stuff. Anyways, took a trip. They took a trip to Union Gospel Mission in Spokane to serve food at their homeless shelter. They hope to do it again this coming December. If you are interested, uh, please let us know. And the contact there is Melissa Wilson. Adoptions or foster parents. If it is in your heart to adopt or become a foster parent or parents, we have some amazing people in this congregation that would love to talk to you about this. Uh, we have Isaac and Monica Wright, we have Greg and Mary Baldridge, and we have Joe and Sarah Cross. The, they are all the point of contact for this. So if something's stirring there, please don't just sit on that. Please move towards that because God is mobilizing his people to take care. I was naked and you gave me clothing, pajamas. Each year at Christmas, Living Faith Fellowship sews and provides flannel pajamas, one pajama one pajama for children aged 10 and under to families who have requested them as part of Pullman Child Welfare's Christmas Outreach. Sewing begins in February and continues until the last pair is in the bags about a week before Christmas. Even COVID did not deter those wonderful ladies from LFF, which is how Pullman Child Welfare Board members refer to our crew. To date, check this out, we have provided roughly 5,000 pairs of pajamas to our community. It is not uncommon for the person picking up the Christmas gifts from PCW to ask anxiously if the pajamas are in the bag. Last year, one single dad related that all he needed for Christmas was pajamas for his children. That is what they really wanted. What we provide is definitely appreciated. Like the food bank, numbers of pajamas requested have dropped in recent years. We dipped from a high of 310 pairs a few years ago to 210 last year. However, we have noticed that the demographics of children being served by PCW has shifted. This topic will be opened up at an upcoming child welfare meeting. Now that we are not so confined by by COVID restrictions, we can use help. You do not need to have sewing experience to join us Tuesday evening and or Saturday morning. The crew currently is Joe Long, Bonnie Quick, Nancy Grunewald, Nancy Cure, and Roberta Asante Sasu, led by Mary Baldridge. Thank you. Thank you. 5,000. Oh, my gosh. 
Palouse Care Network, where single moms, dads, young families find the ongoing support they need to succeed in their parenting journey. The practical resources, community connections, and spiritual nurture to raise their children well. They offer free pregnancy testing, a safe, confidential, and compassionate haven for anyone facing the possibility of an unintended pregnancy, where young people are encouraged to choose a lifestyle that avoids risk to their future and relationship health, where those who have been put at risk through their choices can receive testing, treatment, and restoration. We did a Bible, uh, a Bible. We did a baby shower uh, there. I think it was, it was coordinated by Cassie and other ladies, and, and, and they did a Palouse Care Network says this. Living Faith Fellowship recently hosted a baby shower for Palouse Care Network. We cannot thank them enough for their generosity and love. This couple got to take home a crib purchased from LFF, LFF's donation at the shower. Thank you for loving our community well, LFF. That's pretty cool. Our church is known in this community for loving people well, as it should be. Construction for the new building in Pullman is underway, and they hope to have it completed by the end of the year. It is really an amazing service to our ministry. In needs of, they're in need of volunteers. Police Care Network website is a great place where you can access um, opportunities to serve. They need a resource room helper and processing donations that come in. Also, in other ways, through clothes. Some of you have just given the clothes that you own to other people. There's clothes share that happens in this congregation. Thank you so much. You find a need, you fill a need. I was sick and you cared for me. Hospital visits. Very impacted by COVID. Not been pretty. I've talked to my wife who works at the hospital, other you medical professionals. Um, it's been very difficult. COVID has wreaked havoc on uh, the sick and those of us who've been sick in the hospital. It's not been fun. Um, really appreciate this, this congregation and the way that you have worked around that, the way that you have flooded your love into people's lives who are in the hospital, any way you can visit them or uh, the loved ones that, that they're with uh, that remain home. Um, thank you, congregation, for loving the sick well. Home visits, you people are amazing. The home visits that you do with, with um, people in this congregation who, you know, right now I think of Samantha Sargent. You know, we are praying for you, lady. We believe for healing uh, upon you, and we love you as a body. Ecuador Medical Missions is another one. Um, the trip last year was canceled, but the ministry continues on, and that's what's been amazing. You're going to hear from Kati here in just a little bit. I was in prison, and you visited me. This is a hard one. Prison ministry, literally since uh, March of 2020, the prison ministry came to a halt in Cottonwood because COVID requirements really uh, create, created such a burden that it, it made it almost impossible to minister effectively. So that ministry has been put on hold. Now, prayer does not stop um, any, any boundaries, all right? But at the same time, that's been a major hit, I would say. And so we as a congregation, we need to be continuing to pray for the prison ministry, what does that look like? And, and I know Thomas Lawford and Tom Thompson are, um, they're the point of contact here. So if you've got thoughts, please talk to them. But we as a congregation do need to be praying that doors open up so we can get into those prisons and minister. It's a command. The Lord loves it when we, when we bless the prisoners. Other ways we are touching and ministering to those in our community and, and our world. Operation Christmas Child. Long before shoeboxes arrive in more than 100 countries, volunteer national leadership teams train pastors and community leaders who want to share the message of the gospel and bless children. The leaders learn how to host child-friendly outreach events and how to implement the Greatest Journey follow-up discipleship program. So this is after you guys made all the boxes. There's a dream team taking it out. Come on. Yes. Oh, it's a dream team. There they are. Wow. Ooh, mama. Ooh, wow, I'm not taking any. <laughs> awesome. All right, uh, the contact there is Collins and Roberta Asante Sasu and myself. All right, perspectives. Have you ever been on a video call with someone and the camera angle is off to where all you see is the top of their head and their ceiling and you're like, just willing them brainwaves, please shift your camera angle so I can see your face. And then you meet them in person and it gives you an even deeper understanding of who they are. And you're like, oh, I see now. I had a limited perspective of who you were before. I feel like that's what perspectives class does. Before taking perspectives, I guess I kind of had a limited view of God's heart for the world. I 
knew that prayer was important. I knew that God loved all people, but I didn't really understand what that meant for me besides going on short-term missions trips. Now that I've taken perspectives, I see that I am on a mission with God all the time, not just when I go travel internationally or when I'm interacting with someone from another culture. But within that, he's given me a deeper understanding of how to just love people in general. And he's given me grace and compassion for other cultures that I never had before. I have loved this shift in the camera, camera angle so where I can see God's face, so to speak. And it's awesome. Amazing. Thank you, Melissa. The contact here is Jesse and Dana Weaver. Blood drives. You have a source of life pulsing within you that has the power to transform another life. The next blood drive will be Friday, September 7th, 17th from 5 to 7.30 right here. Brenda Martin is a coordinator for the blood drives through our local church. Myanmar Translation Works. Since 2006, we support monthly the translation of the Bible into the Lenong language located in northwest Burma through Evangel Bible Translators. The pandemic has been very challenging. Borders closed, blocking resource distribution, food transport, and the ability to, for the translation team to meet together at a neighboring country translations facility. Also, there was a coup that started in February, and the main translator had a battery blow up in his face, thought he was going to lose an eye. His daughter had boiling water spilled on her, on, on her arm. I have all these pictures, but there is, uh, there's sensitivity in showing them because um, there's sensitivity in this work. So, um, anyways, medical help is extremely limited. Both the eye and the arm are doing well, but it, had, it has been an enormous challenge. Here's a pic of a Lanong Village Church that's going on. I have a, um, I have a whole list of the books that have been completed and uh, not completed that they're working on as well. If you're interested in any of that, I'll, I will share it with you. We have One Day LA. They just took off uh, on uh, Wednesday we sent them, Friday they left, and they had an amazing time. I, I was on the phone with Carl today. Um, they come back today. They love serving. Uh, there was thousands of volunteers who came. There was uh, thousands of people who, who came to the last event that happened last night. Uh, there was an altar call. Justin Bieber was really choked up, even sharing about his faith. And so it just seems that like God is doing something. And um, there's, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be bringing more of a report of that next week. But it was awesome. Thank you, church. We're doing stuff. We're sending out scouting teams. God's doing a great work. All right. We have some mission trips coming up. Um, we're going to be doing a mission trip to Honduras in March of 2022. And we're going to be going to Equ Oh, no. We're going to be going to... Puerto Rico in uh, June of 2022 as well. So if you're interested in those, uh, please see me and go to the back table. Vicki Owens from Uganda. She's going to be coming into town next month from August 10th to the 20th. Many of you guys know her. If you'd like to spend some time with her, um, you can talk to me or reach out to her directly via Facebook. And in closing, uh, I want to thank you guys for being a part of God's mission. There's so many things I didn't even talk about today that we are funding and Really, the, the point is I just wanted to encourage you, to encourage you with the work that you guys, that we as a body, God has called us to be a part of. I'm going to leave, lead you, leave you with uh, some global comments. I've reached out to each one of these people. There's more I could have done, but these are the, this is the time limit that I'm allowed. So um, in closing, please listen to our global partnerships, people who have, we have a deep relationship with as they encourage you, this church, and God's work. God bless. Oreme, Uno, members, man, Living Faith Fellowship, greetings, uh, you friends from Living Faith Fellowship. My name is Ochen Moses Dileo, married to Margaret with five children. We all live in Lira City, Northern Uganda. I was 20 years ago, I was a Living Faith Fellowship, so enjoyed my IMT program. And it's been a very difficult time globally, including us in Uganda. This is our second lockdown. We have seen how people are struggling. Businesses are gone, people are uh, struggling with schools and churches are closed and um, not much could we go, I mean we couldn't do much here. But all we did is we encouraged ourselves with the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 which says, guard your heart for out of it uh, springs issues of life. And this has been a very good encouragement to us. We have supported each other. We are now back to church, uh, home churches and self-fellowship. And um, I also want to encourage you. I know 
This has been a struggle globally that please guard your heart. The time we are in, we have come so far to stop any journey in faith and spirituality. So, and, uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Whatsoever thing is pure, whatsoever thing is true, whatsoever thing is right, whatsoever thing is excellent, whatsoever thing is uh, right, think about those things. This is my encouragement to you. The Lord bless you. Amen. Hello, Living Faith Fellowship. This is Pastor Paolo Tellini from Rome, Italy. I bring you the greeting from the church in Rome, Assemblea della Fede Vivente. God is doing wonderful things here in Italy. Well, that's beside winning the world, uh, the European Soccer uh, Championship. God is doing more marvelous things. We're here in the church, we are having a brand new, a new class, a class of brand new people taking uh, what is called the Carpenter Series, you know, that the course to bring people to teach them the basic of Christianity. And we will have a couple of people in the next couple of weeks will be baptized and we pray for more that will desire to do so. And uh, also the Holy Spirit is really moving very uh, very strong in this time, even in those people that are well established in the church. So, God is doing really, truly wonderful things. We covet your prayer. We thank you for your support and your prayer. And uh, God's willing, we'll see you in December, in Christmas, Christmas time when we'll be there. God bless you. Ciao. The Church in Rome, Assemblea della Fede Vivente, vi saluta. Ciao! Ciao! Jesus, Jesus, yes. Jesus bless you. Ciao! Uno, dos, tres, saluden, hermanos. Hello! Hello! Hello, my beautiful Church of Living Faith. Fellowship, I'm your missionary Katia Aguirre and today we're here working in the field with my family in Christ. Uh, I want to give you one Bible verse that the Lord helped me through this through this time, which is in um, Psalm 910 that says, those who know your name, trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. These Bible verse kept me going during this hard time of pandemia. Things finally here in Ecuador are going to a sort of normal and it's been very hard because uh, among all these families here, we lost uh, family members. I lost uh, four relatives personally, two aunts and two uncles due to COVID. So it was a very, very hard year. I got sick myself and it, and it was uh, a struggle. But uh, at the same time, uh, in our communities up in the highlands, uh, thankfully no one got sick, no one got hurt. Uh, and we make sure that uh, they were taken care. The word of God was given. The churches never closed up in the community. So that was amazing to see many people coming to Christ, many people being baptized, and the glory be to God. But with this Bible verse, my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that my trust had never gone away from the Lord, and He had never forsaken us. Even when I saw in myself crying on the floor saying, Lord, my family is being taken due to this pandemic. The Lord kept me with this word going and sharing the gospel. So one of these projects that you see, what are we doing today? We started our brand new program that is called our micro business fund because ourselves, we want to become self-sustainable. So we have this program where the grass is growing then it's gonna be cut and given to the cattle that are we're providing to each family. We also have a place here that I will show you in a little bit, which is our chicken project. This is our pilot program. So one day we can um, uh, reproduce these programs up in the community. So God bless you. And thank you so much for your prayers, for your support, and know that here we're working, bringing the gospel to many families. God bless you. Despídense, hermanos. Ciao. You would like to read first some of our family across the country. They are part of our existence, especially when Typhoon Yolanda hit us. And we still remember them, we still pray for them. Uh, I, Pastor Virgilio Innocencio, 
Pastor Ibalay Buhayo. And you are a part of our family here in the Philippines. So today, since we are in the pandemic, and people, even Christians, lots of Christians today are confused because our moves are so limited, we cannot go anywhere. The ministry ship on the other kind of levels. We need to live within a margin. You should know your load and you should know your limitations. And you need to live within that margin. Because when you do not anticipate your load and when you do not anticipate your limitation, you will go overboard. So we need to live within the margin in every area of our life. Всем добрый день. Hello, greetings to LFF. Uh, I'm Sergey Filinov. I'm pastor of the church in Moscow, Russia. So I would like to share with you a word from Psalm uh, 23. It's written that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Actually, in Russian Bible it says the Lord is my shepherd and I will not have needs. And I always thought that, you know, I will not have needs because uh, whenever I have it, the Lord will provide and give me what I need. Actually, as I grow up, I understand that uh, this uh, list of my needs can be endless and some things is not always that the Lord really wants that I will have. So, uh, the more I grow up, I see that the most important in this verse is the Lord is my shepherd. His presence is, is more important. So, I want to encourage all of you to be more focused on the things that have eternal value. We can be worrying about many things in life, what we have and what we not have, but the most important to be focused on the things of God, like faith, love, uh, God's purpose, God's kingdom, the gospel, and spreading the gospel. So write down those things that is more important uh, from eternal perspective and be focused, be encouraged, when uh, every day think whatever, what you can do at this day for God's kingdom. God bless you and give you strength and energy. Amen. Hello. Hi, LFF family. Greetings, I'm Bishop Elton Mahango, coming from Malawi, Central Africa. I'm doing very well, and the family is doing very well also. The ministry is do doing very well by the grace of God. As you know that we are going through this pandemic, worldwide pandemic, COVID-19, whereby we see a lot of things happening. We are affected financially. We are affected in many areas. We cannot move around freely. So it has really affected us. But one thing I'm very much convinced that this is a call to the church, that we should wake up and stretch our faith in one or the other and believe God for greater things in our lives and in our ministries. You know, COVID-19 teaches us that we need to stretch our faith and believe and hope upon the Lord only. Money cannot help. Uh, wisdom or knowledge cannot help. No matter how people know, but with this pandemic, no one is bringing up a solution. Therefore, the church must rise up and believe God for, for greater things. You know, God is going to do greater things in this generation as never before. Therefore, the church must be prepared to be used by God in a special way and in a greater way. May the Lord bless you. God bless you so much. I love you. Bye-bye. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, CJ, for bringing that uh, to our congregation so that we can be aware of, of all of the things that are that are happening. It can be kind of dizzying to become aware of all of the needs uh, on a global scale, you know, because any of us are just an individual. And to try to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations is a daunting task. 
And how cool that we get to be a part of a community of believers here that together we are able to go into many of the nations. We are able to reach many of the people here in our community, things that we could never do alone, but as a part of this body of Christ have opportunity. And, and, and even those of us who aren't involved necessarily in each one of those ministries, those ministries are able to do what they do because of our involvement in the other things. And, and, and your tithes and offerings and your being present. And the, just sometimes it's just the emotional support you provide and stability you provide to those who are involved in them. And so each person here and, and joining us online has such a valuable ministry to play in the whole global church. And so what, how cool that we get to be a part of that. You know, our hopes this morning too, as, as CJ brings to our awareness all of these things that are happening on a, on a regular basis that aren't necessarily in front of us. Our hopes is that there might have been something that, that might have touched your heart in a way that you're like, I do want to know more about that. I want to take that next step. You know, sometimes the next steps are not a big commitment. They're just really something very small to get a little bit more information. And so like CJ mentioned, uh, in the back there's a table that you can go back and talk with some of those who are going to be back there that can give you more information, um, help you start to get more connected to some of these uh, or local organizations or the international organizations. Or you can, in addition to that, you can go on to our church app and you can fill out a, a, a quick form asking for more information and CJ and his missions team will get back to you to begin that conversation. Absolutely, and there's a lot going on around here, here in town, Pullman, Moscow. So this Wednesday, we've got our Wednesday work parties starting at 7 p.m. We're meeting right up in the lobby. Uh, please come. It's a ton of fun. Many hands make light work and truly make it a party. Exactly, and then uh, coming up this Saturday, ladies, we have a summer luncheon for you, and so that's going to be right here in, in the foyer area of this building, and that's at 1215, and so if you could please RSVP by the 29th of July so that they know how many uh, to plan for and to seat for and to be ready for, you can do that. Wish I could go. That lunch is probably going to be pretty good. You and I are going to miss out. Maybe there'll be leftovers. Ah, oh, that's always the hope, so... Uh, well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for being a part of the church. If you are new with us, uh, thank you even extra. Thank you for joining and being a part of what God is doing. Uh, and we got to be a part of what God's doing all across the world. And if you are new, you want to get a greater connection to this church, want to find out any more, as, as CJ has been saying, you can stop by the table. You can find out what, uh, ask any of those questions. But we also have a guest services booth back there. Uh, please stop by. We've got a gift for you. We'd love to meet you and help you get better connected to this church. And Pastor Tom has something to share with us. Yeah, just something real quick. And this is more of a practical thing, but starting Monday, uh, well, let me back up on it. As part of our capital campaign, we talked about some of the more things we wanted to do. And some of those had to do with physical things, like our parking lot at the Family Center. Starting on Monday, they're going to work on the curb. Uh, of the family center, going to be removing uh, the damaged portion and restoring it, putting in a new curb. So don't park on the, that would be the east side of the parking lot uh, up there, but also bear with us over this next month because there's going to be uh, work up there going on. You'll, uh, there'll be days you can't enter that parking lot, other days uh, where there'll be gravel that you absolutely can, but we'll try to communicate. So uh, exciting stuff also requires our patience in the process. So God bless. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, God bless you. Have a great day and be dismissed. Thank you so much for joining us today on this beautiful Sunday here in Pullman. We are so thankful that you have tuned in and um, listened to the message about what God is doing on a global scale, but then what he's doing through this church, even locally. Um, thank you so much to everyone who has tuned in. If you have any questions, feel free to put that in the comment section. Um, otherwise, tell, tell other people that to have a blessed Sunday as well. Again, you can go on the app for any of our our upcoming events, or if you want to know more about how to get involved on missions, um, can do. And so have a blessed week. We will see you next Sunday at 1030. You have been watching the weekend services of Living Faith Fellowship, a spirit-filled local church serving the communities of Pullman, Moscow, and the surrounding region.
We are a group of people who love God and believe in His power to change lives. If you responded to the teaching today or have any questions about Jesus, the Bible, or how to grow in your walk with God, we would love to get in touch. If there is anything we can do to serve you, please let us know. You can connect via social media, our website, or by calling the church at 509-334-1035. God bless you and have a wonderful week.